Hi, I'm Brandi McDonald, arts and entertainment writer for The Oklahoman and News OK, and I have in my studio today Ken Pomeroy. She's a local singer-songwriter here in Oklahoma, and she is getting ready to play at the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival in Okima. It's hard to believe it's already July and that this is happening, but this is your third year to play at Woody it Fest, is. and it you're is. moving on up a little bit in the world. You're going to be playing a featured set on Saturday at mm -hmm. the Hen House. Yes. Talk a little bit about Woody Fest. This is your third year to appear at Woody Fest, and what, what does that festival mean to you? So Woody Guthrie in general has always been a really um, influential person to me, especially because of his conversation topics and his songwriting, and it's very kind of controversial, especially in this day and age. Still relevant, his songwriting is still relevant, which is kind of sad, but um, I did a report on Woody Guthrie, and I did it in the eighth grade, and I wrote a nine-minute song for National History Day about Woody Guthrie's life and his achievements. And I went to the regional level, and then I had gone to the state level, and then I made it to nationals, so I got to perform in Washington, D.C. for a group of judges and I sang my nine minute song about Woody Guthrie. And it was, I didn't place, but it was still an amazing experience just to make, like my music took me there. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was very amazing. And that was in eighth grade, but you actually started back when you were nine years old, I think. It was yes, whenever you I did. started writing songs and singing. And talk about how you got started at age nine. Well, my dad was in a band and um, I had always gone to their practices and then things just started moving and we started doing house concerts at our house and we have a little shop it's called the shop at Skippy's and the musicians were always really welcoming and wanting to teach me something and just would show me something on the guitar or show me anything and I was like well this is kind of cool like these people are really cool and so then I got a baritone ukulele and started doing my thing. Oh, and that's great and I think it moved from baritone ukulele to then I think Prano ukulele and then up to a guitar? And yes, yeah, I play a few different kinds of ukulele, but yeah, baritone was my my very start. Oh, nice, and now it's a guitar. Yes. So you were carrying it around earlier, in fact, so. I am. <laughs> sort of take it everywhere. Yes. So what does music mean to you as a form of expression? Why is it the right thing for you? Well, I, I've had a lot of things happen to me in my life, and good and bad, but music is a way to express myself where I don't tell the exact story, but I can tell it in my own words and I can make people, I can let them relate to my story in different ways and I can make it, I can make a terrible situation so happy within a few chords. <laughs> nice. Gives you kind of a sense of expression and control and things yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely so. control, for Very sure. Very cool. So, now you have already released one EP, uh, Minutes to Hours, correct? Yes. And that was released last year. And yes. then you're working on a second one called Hallways that you're yes. planning on releasing, I think, later this year. Mm -hmm. So, tell me a little bit about what goes into you writing a song. Do, are you pretty prolific? Is this, do you have more songs than these? Or how do you pick what goes on your EPs? To well, go I, do have, I do have a lot of songs that aren't on anything. And I do write a lot of songs that no one has heard just to get things off my chest. but. The songs that I picked for Hallways have was basically a hallway into where I am now. Mm -hmm. And Minutes to Hours was kind of just the start of my sound and trying to find myself. And I think Hallways is where I really found my sound and what I wanted to do songwriting wise. And there's one of these um, songs, the Sidewalk song, that's yes. going to be on Hallways. That's already won um, some quite a bit of attention. You won first place in the inaugural Jimmy LeFave songwriting contest mm -hmm. at the Gypsy Cafe in Stillwater. So t tell me a little bit about that song because it's written from an interesting perspective. It's not written from your perspective, it's written from someone else's perspective. Yes, so um, I have always had a really, really soft spot for homeless people because they are treated differently just because they don't have the same things as other people. And it, they are always looked down upon and people assume a lot of things about people that are less fortunate and I just don't get that at all. I mean, we're all human beings. I don't understand why we persecute others for things that they can't really control. So that song is about 
homeless people and how they can kind of get back on their feet and that you should never judge people for anything. <laughs> so how was it to win that, um, that songwriter contest that's named after Jimmy LaFave, such a great uh, it was songwriter an, from It here. was an honor. He is an amazing songwriter. His family is so, so welcoming and was so very sweet to me when I was there and it was an amazing, amazing opportunity. You've worked with a lot of local musicians. Um, you've worked a lot with Carter Sampson, and I think you went to the Rock and Roll School for Girls that mm -hmm. she uh, heads up, and you've uh, worked a lot with Kyle Reed and some of these others. How has the local music scene been to uh, a, a young songwriter like yourself? It's so welcoming. I think of all of these musicians as siblings or just a really important, really important figures in my life because um, they have influenced my songwriting, just like I wrote the song about Carter, and it, they give me a sense of, like, trust around me, like, it's a really good environment to be in, especially of how just different it is being how I am right now as young, and these people are seasoned musicians, so it's always really awesome to hear the stories and how they write songs and just advice they give me. You get a lot of advice and a lot of uh, feedback, I guess, on what you work on? Yes, and some is constructive criticism, which I love it. It's so good because I, I'm glad that we have the relationship that we have that we can talk about each other's songs and give ideas and be like, hey, maybe you should do something else with this. And it's just, it's so relieving that people are so nice. <laughs> nice. And I think you got a chance to go earlier this year to Focal Lines. It's been kind of a big year for you. You've already been to Focal Lines. Yeah. You won the <laughs> Jimmy LeFay songwriting contest. So how was Focal Lines and how Folk did that Alliance, make a difference to you? Oh my gosh, Focal Lines was such a spiritual experience. Um, basically, it's folk music the whole time. And it's you just feel like every person there, all 3,000 musicians, you have something in common with every single one of them. And you just get into conversations with people you don't even know and you feel like you've known them for years, your whole life. And just to see the differences between people's songwriting and how their life goes and how they express through music, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It was so amazing. So how's folk, how did you know folk music was, was right for you, was the right sound or the right way of expressing yourself? Well, I, don't, I honestly don't know because my first record is a little bit more country than the new record and I feel like just through my recent songwriting I write a lot of sad songs but I'm a happy person um, but just through my songwriting as a whole and the sounds I like to hear I love listening to folk music and I love telling stories and I love that I can tell a story through something that I love now you got a chance also this year to open for Wanda Jackson at the Rodeo Opry. Yes. So how was the, because she's not a folk musician, but come on, it's Wanda Jackson. She's a uh, rock and roll hall of famer. So how was that? It was so, it was so rad because she as well was so welcoming and just acted like I was one of the, one of the buddies she had known for years and she was so complimentary and I actually got to sing harmony with her on stage. So. Um, she complimented my harmonies, and then as she walked off stage, she smacked my butt. And I was like, oh, okay, Wanda, you're feisty. But her, one of the things that I admire about her is her yodeling. Her yodeling is, like, just tear-worthy. It's amazing. That's it's interesting because I actually have gotten to hear her yodel before, and it's fairly impressive. You it wouldn't is. think that the you same person who would sing Let's Have a Party <laughs> could yodel, but yeah. she can... She apparently can. she can do anything, so I'm, True. I'm just convinced. So where can people hear you perform um, outside of Woody Fest? Well, I play um, at JJ's a lot on the Sunday songwriter. They have a um, songwriter Sunday, and mm -hmm. there's the talent that comes out there on a Sunday afternoon is mind-blowing. and. All the musicians come out there for the other musicians and they listen and it's more like a listening room type than a bar at this point. So I play at JJ's a lot, I play at um, Woody Fest obviously and I play at pretty much anywhere. Like I play at El Toro Chino a lot, those are really fun gigs and I'm going on a little mini tour 
through the Midwest, through Branson and Kansas with Kyle Reed soon. So that's going to be exciting. That'll be really fun. So talk a little bit about the atmosphere at Woody Fest because it's it's an atmosphere that's very much about musicians being there to and people who are true. I feel like true music fans. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people on their phones or anything like that. Whenever the, the sets are going on, that Absolutely. kind of thing. So talk to me a little bit about how that atmosphere at Woody Fest has meant what has meant to you as a songwriter. It's very it. It makes me happy, honestly, that people can put their phones down and listen and actually care about what people are singing about and listening to the words of people songwriting because I feel like a lot of people at Woody Fest understand what it goes what goes into writing a song because a lot of them are musicians. Mm -hmm. So all the other people that are not musicians are either friends with musicians or maybe first timers, but they still are there for a reason and it's to listen to music. Cool. So where can people go if they want to get more information about your music and what you're doing? Well, I have a website. It's KenPomeroyMusic.com. I have an Instagram. It's Ken Pomeroy Music, And I have a Facebook as well. It's the same thing. Um, I'm on almost every music platform. I think Minutes to Hours is on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And Hallways is about to be. We haven't really sit quite yet, but mm -hmm. it's, it's getting there. All right. Well, thanks for coming in today. We'll have a lot more information about Ken and about Woody Fest coming up in the Oklahoman and News OK. So you guys should check it out. Thanks for coming in. <laughs>